bring up my lovely guests. They were so wonderful. Uh, Linda Murphy is the CEO of Concierge Home Care, and Charu Raheja is a serial entrepreneur. She's got a couple of companies. Uh, Continuel is a, um, an app that does uh, wellness. You guys come up. I think we're up here. And um, we're going to go through. Does anybody have questions for me while they're coming up? I'm happy to talk. I love to talk. I already mentioned that. You guys, if you can take a seat up here, I'll get us rocking on our panel. No questions because I was that fabulous. Anybody feel tired? Like they're going, oh my God, I can't wait to go back and do all the work you just told me to do. That <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, Linda and Charu uh, introduce themselves. You guys do need to talk into the microphones because um, they're recording. Uh, Charu, why don't I have you introduce yourself first, just a little bit about the company, um, what you guys do, and um, how fabulous I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, Dolly. Um, my name is Shadow Raheja, and unlike Dolly, which she says she loves to talk, I'm the lobby person. I'm the one who doesn't talk unless I need to talk. But I'm also high A, so to be a clear point, which means I like to talk when it's appropriate to talk. So if I'm in a business gathering here, I want to meet all of you. Um, all right, so a little bit about my company. I own a healthcare technology company. I'm a finance person who just started asking questions on medicine and why things weren't working the way they were. And next thing I know, I had to quit my job as a professor so I could run the company. That company works with doctors and hospitals around the country to manage patient care remotely. Uh, the other company I just started was about uh, two years ago because I realized that while we're working with doctors and hospitals, what about your organization? Everyone is spending so much money in healthcare so why not work with employees to help cut down on employee healthcare expense and also engage employees more with healthcare resources and keep them healthy, keep them on the job longer, less days off, more money for the employees, for the more money for the business owners and happier employees. So that's what I do, continue well and triage logic. Thank you. And uh, Linda Murphy, you can introduce yourself please. Um, my name is Linda Murphy, and I, um, I'm the CEO of Concierge Home Care. Um, I'm also in the healthcare arena. Um, I run, um, I have approximately 400 employees. We opened our company about four and a half years ago. Uh, before that, I was, um, I managed about 31 offices throughout Florida for a large publicly traded uh, company with about, oh, at that point, about 1,200 employees. Um, so I decided, um, after working in the corporate world for a long time that I really wanted to go out and do that on my own. I just, uh, it's hard to move a big ship. And um, we have grown from one patient, we touch about uh, 2,500 patients on a daily basis now throughout North Central Florida. Um, actually had such great success that we were very um, fortunate to have a PE group and we had multiple PE groups looking at us over the last um, probably about 12 months, but we brought on um, a large firm that's actually, you know, we should be uh, helping us grow and we should be tripling in size within the next six months. So, and going throughout the Southeast. Excellent. So, I'm going to, we're going to take questions from the audience. I'm just going to get them picked off first so that they can just kind of address how they've done that human capital strategy in support of those uh, very different uh, business strategies. Uh, lady, who wants to take first? Uh, are you in terms of, yeah, yeah, in terms yeah. of well, no. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I met Dolly what, about three or four years ago. And what Dolly did is, is she said, here, let me send you a little survey. And it literally took me less than 10 minutes. And literally, she had exactly my personality. So oh, wow. as soon as I met her, as soon as I got the results, I said, All right, let's get on the phone. I need to meet you. And the way we have implemented, we started by doing just the behavior part, which is essentially telling me, how do you match to your job? So let me give you an example. Um, a couple of years ago, we hired a salesperson. Great person, loves to talk, loves to meet new people. But she, well, she lacked a little aggressiveness to ask for the deal. So lovely person, good at meeting others, but couldn't ask for the deal. So I remember calling Dolly and saying, Dolly, why can't she close? And Dolly said, look at her PI. She doesn't want to close. She wants to be everybody's friend. So she's a great PR person, but she's not a good salesperson. So change the job or you know, change the person. Either change the job description or change the person, one or the other. So that's what we did two years. Uh, we started with the regular behavior. Now last year, we also added the cognitive that we talked about. And what the cognitive does is that it 
helps you understand how quickly this person learns. Now we're in healthcare and we're healthcare technology. Our company moves super fast. I mean, we're constantly adding new programs. We're constantly, you know, the healthcare is changing. So as a result, we need people who can work fast and change things quickly. So on our staff that's in our office, we need very high cognitive because they need to not be scared of changing using new technology and using new processes. On the nursing side, on the other hand, we're not so worried. They know how nursing is done. They don't need to change. We actually don't want nurses to change the way they do nursing. We want them to follow processes. So we're not as concerned about cognitive with them as we are with the staff in the office. Um, honestly, I talk PI every moment of every day in my company. So um, I was very fortunate about 16 years ago to be introduced to PI in a previous life. And I can't even, I won't even look or interview an employee until I've seen the PI first. Um, because I already, and usually actually when I meet folks, I can almost <laughs> start to identify as I'm talking to them where they fit on the PI. So it really is part of our day and day in act, um, activities, just to make sure we've got the person in the right seat of the bus. So um, we utilize it for any type of job that we're going in. When it comes from a sales perspective, I know exactly what a hunter is and I know exactly what a gatherer is. Every time I've hired against PI, when I do that interview and go, oh no, but they're so great, it's always failed me. So PI has always been 100% for us. Um, I use it from a management perspective. I use it, my managers on every level understand PI, at least the basics of it, the management tools that we are able to utilize. So, it's a communication platform, and my job in our company is how do you inspire each individual to be the best that they can be in the environment that we have? And this allows my managers to do that with the employees that report to them. All right, so we're gonna open it up to um, questions in the room. I can walk around and hand microphones. If you don't have any questions, I'm gonna keep talking because I was a former colonel. So. so regarding the PI, Linda, you said that you won't even interview them if you haven't already had that done at this point. So at what point are you having that done? And how, how does your process work to get you to? We, um, we've just put technology in recently to, um, to bring that process along. So we use Workbrite and with the application process, we automatically send them a PI. So um, I like to have it in the forefront because Again, we're in the healthcare arena, so if they're if I'm looking for um, maybe a nurse out in the field that's doing Oasis or starting cares, they have to be very detail oriented and be able to take the time to spend and go through that process. If it's someone in the office that's doing regulatory pieces, I need to know that they've got some of those you know pieces. For myself, I'm a venture. I love the fact a few years ago that we now have titles for all the different types of personalities. So we even put a lot of times our PI and our signature sheets or it's outside our office. So folks coming in, you'll go, okay, I'm gonna have to give this person much more structure and detail because they don't have the detail side of things to make sure I get accomplished what I need to get accomplished. So um, I will, even a lot of times in my time, I've got somebody going, I've got three great candidates for this position. I'll have them send me the resume, send me the PI and I say, this would be my choice based off of PI for the role that we're going to be putting them in. They might be great for a different role, you know, if it's a great dynamic person, but um, really trying to look at the position that they're going into and does that natural motivation of who they are fit that? You know, and I actually just want to echo that for a second. So what I do, uh, you know, because Linda, you already have it automated, but we just advertise on Indeed. But even on Indeed or LinkedIn, because we've done that as well, uh, what we do is that there's the first part where people submit their resume, and if they look, then we already have an automatic reply that says, as long as they fill the basic requirements of the job, like if you have to have an undergrad degree or a nursing degree, then as long as that's checked off, the next email that goes out has, please fill out the PI. So similarly, we will not, and then we'll go through the same process, we'll go through all the PI, before we even interview a candidate. So it's very similar, and it's extremely effective. I mean, think about how much time you save. Instead of looking through 40 um, resumes, you only need to look at four. And it, it doesn't take any time. And I can tell you I've sat with 
hundreds of employees over the last 16 years, and the first thing I do even in the interview process is give them their PI to look at, and everyone's like, how in the world did you figure this out in those questions? You know, it literally takes some folks as quick as 60 seconds to do it, or some folks, you know, more like four minutes, but it's literally just a few minutes of looking at that, and how it captures the data is amazing. And just to, it is EEOC compliant, so for my law people in the room, you're, you're cool. Um, and then um, it's not the only consideration, so like Charo's uh, metric for a certain job. So like my pattern actually is what one of my regional accounting firms, uh, behavioral and cognitively, cognitively will hire for their audit services, but Valley doesn't have an accounting degree. I would be a lousy hire. So this, this data is a little long. And then the post hire piece is how they onboard and manage people. So, uh, more questions? There we go. You get to use the microphone. <laughs> um, I guess my, my common theme here is do you guys see this work throughout different industries, uh, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of college degree, no college degree? Yep, they're still humans. Um, so, I've got clients uh, that source that are in Europe, so they're under EEO, EE, EU law. Um, that source out of Europe and Asia. Um, so these assessments are available in over 70 languages, including Dutch, Papiamento. Um, I've got one in uh, Aruba that will um, source out of Suriname um, and some African nations, so literally everything. So this isn't a measure of somebody's English speaking abilities, it's a measure of their strengths. Every single person, all 7.58 billion people have strengths. So I have a large construction entity that I work with and they're not my term, so I'm just, just in case there's anybody in construction. Um, they're hammer swingers, so not my hand, my, that's not what Dolly calls them. Um, they don't have high cognitive abilities, but they hire for safety behaviorally, and we've changed their first week onboarding, and then we have a morning rally where we uh, reinforce a safety protocol or process. Not, not that they're dumb, they just need it kept top of mind. Don't forget we're on the third floor today. Review fall hazards. Uh, don't forget, you know, whatever, another safety protocol. Um, so with that said, are there certain databases that have proven of a specific index for specific um, positions yep. or whatnot? Yeah. We have over 500 criterion, criterion related validity studies for all industries and we're also global. So you, these behaviors are exhibited. So for example, it's not one of my clients, but one of my colleagues um, has uh, folks in uh, the People's Republic of China. Um, and, and, um, one of my IT firms in uh, Chicago sources out of, it's an area of India and I can't remember this. So they, there's multiple languages that are spoken in India but it's one area that they source out of and those behaviors are still, the behavioral and cognitive qualities. So they're still human. I don't care if they've got a degree, they're still, mostly they're human. So I know that there's been some that you're like, you're not quite sure if they're human, but most of them are human. Actually, Dolly, can I ask you that yeah. with, with a cultural thing? So I grew up in Brazil, and my family's in Brazil. My husband grew up in India, at least for two years of his life. And what's interesting is that even though we have such a different uh, PIs, one, one of the things is when you went cross culture So I also went, and I know Dolly may not like this, but I actually asked <laughs> my family members to do the PIs. And it really helped, because <laughs> now suddenly I understand why my brother is so, careful and he's constantly asking me to check on things over and over and I'm saying of course you pack that stuff why are you bothering me I understand because he's the extremely diligent type and I'm the kind that kind of wings it and so I make him nervous and now I understand that uh, so it, it's just it really helps but that's that's answer sort of the question about it grows cross culture because he is in Brazil um, yeah it does really help I, I like to add that to that too because you do really start to understand driving that behavior behind that. Um, I have something that will come back to me I was gonna say in relation to, I also have done this on every family member. <laughs> Actually, um, it, it's it, okay it for practice. The, wor the worst case is actually the more, you, I think the more you get to know someone, sometimes you have a harder time determining what their PI is versus if you just meet someone, you can almost instantly see what their PI is. So what she's talking about there is we will, we're humans, and so we are empathetic regardless of our behavioral patterns, and we will project onto people more than their uh, capacity sometimes to do or, or the, that we expect things. So if you think about like your siblings and how you played when you were kids and you get up into the working world and you meet somebody that reminds you just like your brother, 
Um, it's we're projecting on them. It may not be who they are at their core. That's why we want to have the science to measure those behaviors. I think when you're looking at the greatest indicator, though, um, in the healthcare arena, um, turnover rate runs anywhere from really 36 to about 48 percent. It's a really difficult arena. I run about a six percent turnover rate now. That's not all because of PI, but I do feel like we, when we hire, we hire the right person and we give them the adequate education and training that they need based off of their cognitive, um, and it just helps with that. Culture obviously has um, a big piece. Personally, you know, I, I don't think of culture. I think of culture as a mindset of everyone. So again, you know, we're on a journey of continuous improvement. And is that culture? You know, are you providing the culture, or is it the mindset of the company that understands? culture in each individual. We got a question over here? Yeah, hey, um, I was really impressed that you said that you guys almost uh, label them, right? Like you said, was it a Voyager or something? Yeah. 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 You know, so it seems like there's an interpretation that your team has adopted that understanding of what that index represents. Um, how, how does the PI compare to like disk assessment, Myers-Briggs, you know, is this like a choose one or is there you know, why, why PI, if that's kind of like softball, I guess. So I can ask this, this question because I've looked into it. So, and it, one of the biggest differences, first of all, it's very fast. So you can actually send it while you're doing a job interview and, and it takes the person less than, less than 10 minutes, like five minutes really, to do. So you can actually get an assessment. The other thing is, is that literally all I have to do is look at a graph. So you can give me 15 PIs and it'll take me one minute to look through and say, this is a candidate. So that's the other reason, so fast. The third and biggest reason, I think, is that, for example, Myers-Briggs, you have to select one of the choices and you have a limited number of things you can select. The difference in PI, you can choose as many things as you want. And so it's much more flexible and it's not forcing me to box myself. So I think it has much more room to interpret an individual. Can I add to that? Um, the, um, it is an EEO, it's EEOC compliance for uh, human capital decisions, but again, it's only one metric, so people get to freely pick as many or two attributes. And the cognitive is a 12 minute time assessment, so this is telling us when you onboard somebody, what is your investment of time, what are the resources you need to dedicate. And I don't care if somebody's got a, you know, a master's degree in something, you're still going to have to teach them something when they come into your organization. So, um, yes. Do, but it doesn't replace, for example, somebody said construction. Um, if somebody applies and they've got the best PI behavioral assessment and, and cognitively you can train them, but they being all five on the DOT drug test, you are not putting them on a job site. Let me just tell you that right now. Okay, so I'm just saying this. There's other considerations that go into it. Go ahead. But it's definitely, for me, it's de definitely the simplicity. I've done DISC and done all of those pieces. I love all of the analytics behind personality. Um, but PI, it takes me just a moment to look down. Everyone's familiar with the conversations. This is so, it, it basically says the same thing PI saying in a lot of different ways, but PI to me is very simple. Just got a question over here. So I think um, what I heard, uh, I think, I think Linda, you had mentioned it. Uh, uh, post using the PI, uh, your retention rate has increased significantly. So by comparative, prior to using this system, what was your turnover rate like, both of you, and, um, and what is it today? Two, um, is this pushed down into the organization where it's not just you having to deal with it, but your lead managers? Uh, because oftentimes uh, the managers uh, that you bring on board um, are doing their job, not necessarily hiring. So I'm just curious how, you know, what your experience has been. Well, when I started my company, I knew I couldn't start the company without PI. So um, as we were pinching every penny we possibly could, I started from day one because I knew I needed that. So we've had a very low turnover rate from the very get-go. Um, actually, I've had a waiting list of employees that try, have been waiting to get into the company as positions became available. Um, it is pushed down all the way through all my managers, including my clinical middle management and all the way down. Because again, I use it as a communication tool. How do you inspire this person that's working for you? How do you understand what drives and motivates them on a day-to-day -day basis? And how do you communicate with them? 
I'm a, a very dominant person, as you can imagine. I'm high on that beat, you know, and I have to I have to tailor that um, when I'm dealing with different folks in the company so that I can get the best out of them and understand what motivates them. So, yeah, uh, it's all focused on the change pre and post PI. So, and I'm going to focus on the nursing part because that to us is critical. I mean, everything is critical, but nursing, we're talking about patient care over the phone where they have to follow processes. Before PI, I would have our managers complaining about this nurse is not following processes, what's going on, I need to put it on probation, why it, you know, why did they not follow the protocols, you know, or maybe didn't document exactly the way they're supposed to document. As soon as I got the PI, I looked through and I said, and I said, oh, this nurse doesn't really seem to enjoy following processes. This is not the nurse that wants to do the same thing day in and day out. And then my manager said to me, oh my gosh, this is the nurse that I've been struggling with. At that point, we realized this nurse was just in the wrong position. But I wouldn't have known that before the PI. We were constantly training, constantly trying to do intervention. But once the PI came, we then knew this, isn't, this person is just not fit to that. It's kind of like I'm a high, very dominant and I'm somebody who kind of likes to wing state. So if you tell me, and so part of my academic job as a professor, I had to collect a lot of data and do research. And while I was really good at it, the data collection and the part of being really tediously looking through documents, that drove me insane. And now I know why, because it just doesn't fit my personality. So we got a question back over here. A question regarding um, engagement and culture. The, the notion that PI is a great proxy for engagement in visually the communication that flows. Are there any studies or have you experienced how that engagement translates into a tool like Q12 that measures organizational culture and shows how you can scale the business by scaling the culture or are they silo issues and there's no connection between the two? So they are really, so his question is about um, engagement surveys and engagement studies and they're, they're great. So if you're not using the predictive index uh, experience survey, that's fine. Other engagement surveys, because it will come down to those four areas that I discussed, um, which will be, so basically you're just going to have to do your analysis on the, behavior, the job match, uh, the um, manager match, the team match, and then you would just import or you know, throw it in an Excel sheet. I'm, I'm not familiar with the, the outputs where the engagement survey in the PI software would actually just go through and show you that in uh, alignment. But yes, and there is a study that um, indicate very much that these things, because again, you can have uh, an engaged department, but if you have another engaged department that's uh, causing organizational friction, essentially, and preventing like workflow issues, or if you've got sales guys that are meat eaters and they're going out and selling, 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 and the venture production guys, you know, couldn't turn out the next widget fast enough, you know, that's an organizational friction. It's also probably causing disengagement there. So we do have to address those things. And PI has really, Oh no, I forgot to silence that. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, PI has really evolved too over um, over the years. It, you know, so now that you do have tools, so the manager can look at what's my strengths, you know, and weaknesses, or not even weaknesses, because you don't. There's no such thing as weaknesses at, um, in PI. But how will I? engage with this person or communicate with this person that you're going to get better results. The other nice thing of this is, and which I've used over many times over the years, is I can call Dolly and I say, okay, Dolly, I got these two employees. You got to help me. And we'll look at the two pieces and how do they communicate and then even bring those two in, talk about how they're different and how they can work together and what can we set up to make a more productive work environment for both of them. Um, I think in here, I think having Dolly has really changed. So I think there's different kinds of uh, people, I'm sure, that get licensed PI, but one of the things that Dolly does is she helps us with engagement. So we, we had an activity in our office about two or three months ago, which was so successful. We paired people with three different individuals, and they had to discuss PI with one another. So Dolly came in, did an introduction, explained how PI works to everyone, including the people that were remote, to not, well, everyone that was in management team, I guess, not the 200 nurses all, all over the country. But we, uh, but as we engaged them and she explained how it worked and then we paired each, with each other and talked about what do I need as an individual and how, what is my communication style 
and what did each other need. And it was very successful, people loved it. So I think there's also that part of the engagement is also bringing in the expert on PI into the company to talk to employees about what does it mean and how do you communicate with one another. And there are other licensees, you know, so. But yes, I'm fabulous, I'll give you that 20 minutes. Um, is, there, <laughs> is there any other questions, other questions? We do, we're good on time. Curious. Um, uh, I, I am actively encouraging our clients. I'm, I'm uh, with a CPA firm to to pursue this type of system. Um, some CEOs are concerned. You know, they've uh, they've had people in there for 10, 15 years, and nobody really knows each other's personality. It's private information. Um, did you um, ever uh, run into any kind of resistance? Um, amongst your people sharing this information, okay, one. Two, when you actually run the PI map, um, do you have them, do you have your people post them on their, uh, outside their door, okay, so that, so that people can read them, so, you know, just where it's full transparency, folks know who they're dealing with. We have a company of full transparency that way, so everyone's really comfortable. Um, I have, over the years, because in, initially I wouldn't do it with everyone, I had two employees that we had problem issues with them, and when it came down to it, and I asked them to do a PI so the managers would help, both refused, <laughs> and eventually ended up going a separate way. So um, I've only, like I said, out of hundreds and hundreds of employees, I've only ever had two that have said, hey, I don't want to do that, because I think we do present it in a very positive way. There's no wrong or right. There's no PI bashing, so to speak. Has anyone done colors in the room before? Yeah, colors. You know, it's the same way. It's like no blue bashing. You know, I'm <laughs> sorry, you're really empathetic, blue folks. So we use, we've used a lot of, um, uh, personality pieces even in the uh, you know in our training and I think because we sit down employees from day one and we are very transparent with this is who you are this is who your manager is and how do we communicate with each other I've now gotten to a point where I do a management uh, sheet on every employee that they work with so um, they really understand how's the best way to communicate with those folks so we use it as a tool it, um, and with full transparency. That's an extra great question because I thought about that when we were hiring people. So first of all, the, those who have, have been with our company before we got PI, of course they were the only ones who had a choice, right? Because the new candidates, they did the PI before they even interview with us. Now um, in terms of resistance, once people fill up the PI, we share the PI with the individual. And we explained that the reason why we use it is because we're trying to make sure the job fits their personality. That they're, they're doing something that they enjoy, that makes them excited, and they're not working on resistance and trying to do something that is not natural to them. Uh, and so that's, so, so we presented as a, a way to help them. So it actually works to our advantage because it's all part of our employee retention, retention policy because it essentially gives us a way to communicate, am I fitting your needs? I see that that's what you like to do, is this really the case? We confirm it because I, I haven't come into a case where somebody says, that's not true, that's not what I enjoy. Um, and so once we do that, that helps us also with reviews to say, and also helps us with helping people feel that they are cared for. In our company. And they have the placards posted. I've been in their offices, and you go in, and, and uh, people will have them up all over. Um, at the CEO level, I, I believe both of our CEOs here would agree that they feel it's only fair to warn people about what they're getting into when they go into that <laughs> office. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. So you uh, you talked about taking the PI survey before they actually interview. I'm curious, you know, if, if this, there's a candidate that might answer the way they think they, that you might, this role might want you to answer, how often do they take that survey again to make sure that we're validating that the PI score that they're getting is actually authentic to them? I go with the first time they ever take the test. So uh, that one of my first questions is, have you ever taken the PI before? And if they have, I ask for those results. 
So um, I pretty much don't ever retest. You can, I mean, there's philosophies to all of those pieces, and Dolly can speak to that better than I, but I do know that the first time you do the test, like even myself, if I do it, my test is different now than it was from the first time that I did, because I've maybe evolved or maybe recognized, you know, um, I believe in self recognition, recognizing who you are, what you are, and how do you lead, you know, is really important, and I think we try to counterbalance some of those. So second time around, you may not answer that question as accurately. Dolly, I know you'll answer that better than I did. So yeah, the um, self-graph will stay within what they call statistical tolerance. So again, to be a tool, it's gotta be valid, reliable, repeatable, and I'm sure there's something else that a legal person would tell you. I, I'm not an iris psychologist, so just understand. So um, actually, so we only do it the first time, just like uh, just like the other companies, and uh, and the thing, and the reason is, is the questions are so benign, there is no way for you to mess that up. It's like, I don't know, do you like walking on the park or do you prefer to watch TV? Like, what is the right answer on that? So it really helps because you're just basically answering on your intuition. And that's why you want to capture only the first time because the second time around, you may want to try to game the system. Because I try retake, I'm like, why are my results different? It's because now I know and I'm trying to game it. The first time around was just intuition. Yeah, and people who do training. Now I will say, it's, it, because it is used, I have people who have, do have multiple assessments. The statistical tolerance is what makes it valid for hiring. So if your job model, you're looking for a high D, an organized person, low A, accommodating team player, uh, low C, fast paced, and low B, you know, analytical, quiet, reserved, that your B might shift a little more left or something, but it stays within the statistical tolerance for um, a human capital decision. So you, that self graph stays the same. But yeah, you could game it, especially if you've been trained. The words in yes, I know you guys have both gone through it a couple times. So. Yeah. If when I redo mine now, for instance, I'm my B is a um, high B, I'm analytical and um, introverted. But when I redid it a few years later and being forced in the position that I'm in now, my B is actually slightly extroverted, which I'm not extroverted by. It's very uncomfortable sitting up here in front of all of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like three very, very, yeah. very, very tight, yes. Can I ask a question? So from an interviewing perspective, if somebody maybe off the charts, so I know Ray gave me mine and there was the level of aggressiveness on the paper, but I've been able to tame it, right, in the environment. So have you hired people that maybe behaviorally, after you saw the PI, you talked to them about the behaviors and then made that hire, or is it they don't meet the qualifications, the overlay, and so there, it's an absolute no? Yes, and I made a mistake. So, right, that was, the, that was the hire on the sales position, which was somebody who I've just got along so well, thought she was perfect, she presents herself so well, and, and it's still, a great person, but could not, like I said, couldn't close the job. And Dolly had warned me before, and I said, oh no, I think I think I can change the personality, and I could. But I think, again, it gets to awareness, and you know, so we do have those discussions. There's great interview questions that go along with PI that you can ask specifically when you do see something that might create, well, are they gonna be too assertive for this particular role? And I think folks along the way, you gotta remember, this is work, you know, these are the motivators, what motivates someone, but your experience, your um, your education, all the other factors also contribute to a, a whole person and how well you understand that piece. Okay, another question. The, you know, the power of the tool and the communication that follows is wonderful, and to the extent that it translates internally into the family setting is wonderful. How about externally? Have, have either of you, or in your experience, applied it to key vendors, to key customers, to investors, the world that surrounds your business, so that that same communication, that same that, uh, engagement can be enhanced, obviously voluntarily, but have you tried that, and if so, with what success? It's interesting, again, I think, um, because I've been through the training a couple of times now, um, I recognize some of that when I am working with vendors or folks. I think it's a skill that a lot of our sales team and marketing teams naturally start to understand. I mentioned colors, you know, which is a quick way for you to go into, uh, for us, into a physician's office and see that person sitting behind a desk and get an idea. Okay, is this a detail-oriented person? Is this a family-oriented, extroverted person? tell certain ways, do they have pictures on their desk, are they more, you know, um, I look at the combinations of that. So 
in the aspect of do we actually take the test to those folks and, and get that done and evaluate? No, but I think because we spend the time with our employees, getting them to understand who they are and who they work with, that helps enhance how they communicate with folks outside of the industry or outside of our organization. Yeah, we haven't asked our vendors or others to do the PI because it's, it would be kind of an uncomfortable thing, right? Uh, would you do this in order for me to communicate with you? Although we've done a little bit in sometimes on team building activities, but we have a board of advisors. In that case, that we're all working together. How about we look at each other's personality so we know how each other's going to respond? But that was that was more as a team building where people agreed to it, to following the PI. But it, when it comes to vendors, it's a harder thing to ask. But we try to gauge a little bit. I think it's just partly it's made us more aware that there are personality traits, and I think that helps. So no, and just it is a contract for your company and any other applicants for your company. So I'm not hearing any of this like outside talk. <laughs> I was just about to say that right now. <laughs> I'm flexible, but I like my job. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, there's nothing more exciting when you have a leadership meeting and you sit everybody in the room and we all have our, our all our PIs and we're all, okay, let's get in a line of the most assertive to the most collaborative person and you see where everybody sits on that line. It's, it's pretty eye-opening and then again from introversion to extroversion and all the way down, it, there's a lot of fun things that you can start to do. Um, you can use it as an excuse too, which I, Dolly frequently does. Sorry, my email might, might not be as detailed, you gotta remember, <laughs> you know? So it's a great excuse. <laughs> if you see the word head in an email I sent you, please recognize that it was, I did not have the 2.4 seconds required to spell check it before it goes out. So head is the, just so you know, just for any future communication. And I mean, I go back to the example of saying, okay, you know, myself versus someone else that might be a little more detail oriented, you know, I'll say, hey, you wanna meet me at the mall at three o'clock on Saturday? You know, that's the way I send a message. There's no detail to it, you know, versus, you know, my VP of operations would say, hey, Linda, what do you think about meeting at the mall at three o'clock? We'll meet outside of JC Penney's because we're gonna go in the Hallmark and we'll get a gift, what do you, you know, and we'll be, meet there at 3.07. You know, it's like just the difference between the way we communicate and understanding. You may have to ask me a few more questions if you want the details or maybe slow down enough to tell you that. More questions? All right, so let's just do some closing statements. Um, ladies, I'd like for you just to address a little bit about how using this has helped you accomplish your business uh, objectives, your business strategies, which are ongoing, I get it. But. They are, and um, today I sit down, I'm very fortunate to know that we're gonna be growing. We've had, um, prior to even bringing on PE, um, we've had a 35 to 45% growth year over year in each one of my offices, so. Yeah, um, it's, it's helped me in a couple of different ways, growth being the key one, uh, because uh, as, we, you know, as we know, nursing, there's a shortage of nursing, so it helps us become more effective, and also it helps us become more efficient in the hurry because we're constantly advertising, we're constantly hiring, and there's just not enough man hours to look through all those resumes, and the PI has saved time, helps us hire effectively, and hire fast, because I think one of the things that you know, we've heard before is that the average candidate is in the market for 10 days or less. So if you want to get those candidates in those 10 days on time frame, you have to get all of that information as quickly as you possibly can. And so that's why PI has helped us so that we can grow as fast as possible in the, in the more efficient way. So thanks to our panel. Yay.